What is up, everybody? Hopefully you're having an awesome day. Um, if you watched the last video I posted, which was uh, me rebuilding a uh, factory Ford PI intake, uh, you will notice that I started the process of draining the coolant. And I've also started the process of getting ready to pull the intake. Now, this can easily be done in a day. I started it yesterday knowing that uh, there was going to be storms in the evening and you're probably wondering, well, I, we never see you work on the car in the garage. Well, it's because this garage is cramped and full of junk and there's not a whole lot of room to work on stuff. So I usually pull stuff out in the driveway to work on it. However, I knew that was going to happen yesterday. So I, and I wanted to get it started. So I pulled it in here. Um, I am not going to do a step-by-step -step on removing the intake manifold on these cars. There are several very, very good uh, instructional videos on YouTube. Uh, one that I can think of off the top of my head that's very good is one by, uh, I believe it's A1 Auto. Now, of course, they replace the intake with these junk Dormans, but that's, that's another story. What I will tell you is is it's not terribly hard. It's mostly just moving stuff out of the way. The great thing is, is these motors pretty much come apart with a 10 millimeter, an eight millimeter, a seven millimeter, and a 15 millimeter. There's not many more bolt sizes, if any, on these motors. Um, important things that I wanna touch base on, uh, if you're doing an intake manifold, uh, one, is get yourself a fuel line quick disconnect tool. These are cheap, looks like this. It's a quick disconnect tool set. This one came from O'Reilly's and it was about $7. You're gonna need that. Uh, another thing is uh, if you're going to be in here doing stuff, it's not a bad idea to you know, do your tune-up at the same time if you got spark plugs and all that. Now, these spark plugs are relatively new within, well, within the last year. What I am going to be doing is I'm going to be upgrading coil packs. Um, I'm, I've got an intermittent uh, misfire on startup, or so the computer thinks. The car runs fantastic. There's no issues with it running. Uh, but the computer always thinks that there's a misfire on startup. What I am going to be upgrading to is um, Summit Racing has 40,000 volt co performance coils for these. So we're going we're gonna to give them a try. These Excel Super Coils have worked well. Uh, when I did a tune-up on the car was five, six years ago when I first got it, I replaced the coils, uh, and these were uh, a cost-effective option. So I just went with that rather than OEM. Uh, so we're going to be replacing those and see see how those uh, do in this car. Another thing uh, is your EGR tube in the back of the intake there. Um, you can get it off with a, an adjustable, adjustable wrench. Uh, there are wrench sizes and tools designed for that. You really just need an adjustable wrench. Uh, if it feels like you're really fighting it, soak everything in PB Blaster or WD-40 or something um, because it should be the, the cylinder and the nut portion. I guess the, the whole nut is part of the cylinder. That should be the only thing that turns when you go to take this apart. If you see your actual EGR tube turning, stop. Reevaluate. Um, maybe soak things down, maybe add a little bit of heat if you got a torch, not too much because you don't want to burn stuff underneath the hood there. But stop and reevaluate because you're going to twist your EGR tube straight off. Um, so just pay attention to that. Another thing, guys, keep track of your bolts. <laughs> don't just throw them in a bucket and expect to remember where they went. Uh, I know we all think that we can do that. I'm guilty of that so many times, but keep track of them. Get an old piece of cardboard or uh, that there's a product out there called the Boltster. It's just like a sil silicone holster uh, for your bolts. That's pretty cool. I said a bunch of YouTubers use that, but 
keep track of what you're doing. That way you're not searching for stuff when you're trying to put it all back together. Thing I would like to point out is a lot of these instructional videos have you completely removing every single tube and connection, etc., from your throttle body and upper plenum. It's not really necessary. Um, you're going to need to remove the electrical connections. Um, you know, they have you pulling the, the throttle cable and everything, which is not necessary. Once you get everything disconnected, pulled apart from the EGR tube, just take it and flip everything up on your cowl. Just leave it sit there. It's out of the way. It's not hurting nothing. And that leaves you being able to get to everything that you need on your intake. So just, just a little tip. You don't need to completely disassemble every single thing. So once you've got everything torn down, Stuff your uh, your intake holes with paper towels. That way you don't get junk in your engine. All right, now once you got your holes stuffed, <laughs> giggity, you can proceed to clean up your surface. Um, you're going to want to do that that way when you put your new intake on whether you're doing a, another pi intake or you're doing a dormant whatever whatever you're doing uh you're going to want the best seal possible so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit this with brake clean i'm going to see how that cleans up uh and then i'll probably make a couple of passes over it with like a a 600 grit sandpaper again when you're doing something like that the, the finer grit sandpaper, the better. You just want to take the gunk and nastiness off the surface. You don't want to damage the surface that you're sanding. So. I apologize for the wind noise, but this is a great opportunity to take a look at the Dorman intake and the factory PI intake side by side and get a real good visual of how and why the dormant intake actually kills 25 horsepower on a stock motor that's on a stock motor guys you know if you've got stuff done to your car you're obviously killing even more horsepower um, but this is a really good illustration of what's going on so this is the factory or uh, you could call it oem pi intake from ford you see the size of the runners the length of the runners um, you know how it's built and then look at the size difference on the doorman the runners are shorter and once you get down in there it's you can't really see it but it's actually more restrictive on the bottom end of the runners because this is based on the older npi design so that's what's robbing your horsepower uh, and torque. Um, obviously, for for a factory car, that's a big girl. You're going to want to keep torque. So this is killing your low end torque. If you if you do anything with motors, you understand that a longer runner is going to give you mo more lower end torque. A short runner uh, is going to increase velocity, and you're going to get more horsepower on the top end. So that's what's going on with the doormen. That's why the doormen are junk. Uh, if, if it's a daily driver and you're just tooling around town, you don't have any like real modifications done to your car, you're probably not gonna notice much, if anything. In a performance application, look at the difference there. You're gonna notice that. You're absolutely gonna notice that. I'm actually pretty happy with how well that's cleaning up with just uh, a little bit of brake clean. I need to go over it again, but uh, the surface itself, that, uh, yeah, I think a gasket's gonna seal just fine against that. So I don't think that I'm gonna need any sandpaper, which fine by me. Also, I'm gonna replace my oil pressure sending unit. Shout out to uh, Autometer for warranting that sending unit right there. Uh, it failed. Or is in the process of failing it does not give accurate readings sometimes it does not give any readings at all reached out to auto meter and they said yeah uh, we'll take care of it sent me out a new one so uh auto meter guys 
best gauges out there fantastic customer service all right and as you can see i got the the gaskets on there for the pi intake um i went the extra mile and i rtv'd the water passages so when that snugged down if this thing leaks i don't know i'm just I'm trying to make sure that in case when I rebuilt the intake, any irregular surfaces that may exist are going to for sure be sealed up. I don't think the, uh, the intake runners itself are gonna be any issue. It's these coolant passages that I'm, I'm worried about uh, having leaks. Because of course, that's, that's where these intakes always fail. And once you get your intake uh, installed back on the car, of course, uh, the easiest analogy is that uh, then you just do everything in reverse. So everything that you took off, you put back on. Well, here's the finished product all buttoned up. Uh, it's been buttoned up for a while. All that other footage that you saw was a couple of months ago. I've been a little bit behind on video editing. I apologize about that. Uh, but I do certainly hope that... Uh, Although not a full-on instructional video that this has helped you guys a little bit or maybe uh, reduced some of the uh, anxiety that is out there about uh, replacing your intake on these cars. It's really not all that bad. Uh, I guess some of the biggest takeaways or tips that I can give you. Um, number one, when you're draining your coolant, there is that, uh, that coolant drain on the underside bottom of the radiator. You don't need to drain every last drop of coolant out of these cars. What you want to do, though, is make sure that your coolant level is drained below the level of the intake. So as long as that's good, you pull the intake off and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, another big one, although a lot of the instructional videos showing you pretty much completely removing uh your upper intake plenum and, and all that taking it out of the car and all the hoses and the throttle linkage if you're 2004 and down etc that's not necessary either once you get the big stuff disconnected uh, the stuff that you can't twist up out of the way uh, egr etc flip the entire thing up on your cowl and just get it out of the way that'll save you some time and effort there uh, Another big one, of course, go pick up uh, your quick disconnect tools for your fuel line. And also, another big one, just be careful with your EGR tube. I don't think I showed this in the previous footage, but this right here. So that nut and the cylinder that's associated with it is the only thing that should be spinning when you go to take this off. If this tube back here starts spinning with this, stop. Uh, put some PP blaster or other penetrant oil in there and try and break it loose maybe with a little bit of heat but so uh, you know there you go guys uh, again thank you for watching uh, please comment share the videos like the videos it all helps the channel uh, and I really do appreciate all you guys close out the video with uh, uh, a quick poll with the new intake on here. And uh, it, yeah, the mid-range power from going back to a uh, PI intake manifold, definitely worth it. But anyway, guys, thank you again. I do appreciate you all. Uh, and most importantly, have an awesome day.